Instrumental variable techniques can be applied to estimate simultaneous equations models. The most common and the simplest of these techniques is the two-stage least squares. The idea of instrumental variable estimation of a system is that all exogenous variables qualify as instruments for all endogenous variables. So in this case we would uh, use x1 and x2 as instruments and if we apply two-stage least squares basically what we do is that we estimate each equation, each y, separately using x1 and x2 as instruments for every equation. Now, one question that, that may come to a person's mind is why are we not using a y1 as an instrument for y3? Because uh, when we establish the model identification using the block recursive rule, we, we uh, note that y1 is an instrument for y3 and therefore the model is identified. The uh, reason why we are not using y1 as an instrument is that these instrumental variable estimators when applied to a system they make also the assumption that these errors here are uncorrelated with these errors here. So we are making this hidden assumption. Of course if we know that these errors are uncorrelated then that assumption is unnecessary. But that is something, never, something what the estimator nevertheless applies and for that reason we cannot use y1 as an instrument for y3 because the estimator does not want to make the assumption that u1 would be uncorrelated with u3. They are estimating a model using uh, the system-wide two-stage least squares is as I said equivalent to running a two-stage least squares for each model separately. And here's a small demonstration using Stata. So we generate our random variables. We generate Q first to generate our correlated random variables. Then we generate X1, X2, Y1, Y2, Y3 and Y4 that have some correlations. And then uh, we estimate with systems estimator. We store it and then we estimate the single equation, two stage least squares. And then we compare uh, these estimates. We can see that they are the same. So running a system's two LS two-stage least squares is the same as, as estimating each equation separately. So two-stage least squares is, is one option, it's a simple option, but there are also other alternatives. And one alternative is the three-stage least squares. So the idea of three-stage least squares is that we take the two-stage least squares we are and then we take seemingly unrelated regressions and we combine them. So uh, three stage least squares is basically two stage least squares plus an additional step that estimates uh, there are the feasible generalized least squares uh, equation using the two stage least squares results. So instead of uh, like we in seemingly unrelated regression we normally use OLS regression for calculating the initial covariance matrix. Here we use two stage least squares. So we just add a third step. But this adding this third step making this estimator uh, a systems estimator is comes with a caveat and status user manual is pretty good at pointing out these kind of things. So they point out that while this provides a small efficiency advantage it comes with a cost and the cost is that because three states least squares estimates the full system at a time and we can no longer estimate one equation at a time then if one of those equations is misspecified that misspecification can affect the estimates of all other equations as well. So this is one advantage with two stage least squares and generally any other limited information techniques that estimate the model one piece at a time is that misspecifications in other parts of the model will not affect what the, the quality of the estimates in, in one particle part of estimation. So when should you use these techniques? Three stage least squares are maybe more efficient and the difference may be small. So that's, that's going for that estimator. Then for two stage least squares, uh, that should be used because it's simpler to apply. So if your sample size is large enough that you're going to be efficient enough and you have strong instruments, then uh, using two stage least squares is probably a better idea because the uh, added value of the added efficiency is pretty small. It makes less assumption, it's more robust. So three states least squares we have to assume that all those are uh, exclusion criterions of every uh, variable holds even across equations. And also the readers of your article are more likely to understand this method. I think I've seen more incorrect explanations of three states least squares in applied 
literature than I've seen correct explanations. Also, you need to consider that these two are not the only options. So we also have maximum likelihood estimation and generalized method of moments, which are more modern techniques than, for example, three states least squares. I personally consider three states least squares to be largely obsolete technique and I would use GMM or maximum likelihood instead. The two states least squares has a, 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 a use while it's old and that use is in diagnostics. So because a two states least squares estimates one equation at a time, if you have a problem with your full system, for example, you cannot get your maximum likelihood estimates to converge, then you can try estimating one equation at a time. So make a bigger, bigger problem, uh, a series of smaller problems, and then you can probably figure out what is wrong instead of looking at uh, one big problem where it's difficult to see what happens. And then also this is more robust. So two states least squares, uh, as I said before, does not rely on assumptions from other parts of the model. It only relies on the assumption that the part that we are currently estimating is correctly specified. So if there is a misspecification in the model, its effects are local instead of spreading throughout the system.